seven on the pole position inside the front row. And alongside your winner two weeks ago at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Buddy Rice starts in position number two. In the second row, a former winner this season, Tony Kanaan, also for Andretti Green, starts inside row two. And outside, your leading rookie qualifier, it's Matsura starting in the fourth position. And Brian Herta, again for Andretti Green, will start in the fifth position inside row three. And outside, Elio Castro Nevis, the best Toyota starting in the sixth position. Another rookie starts inside row four, Ed Carpenter for the Red Bull Cheever racing entry. And outside, former rookie of the year at the Indy Motor Speedway, Thomas Schechter in number four. In row five on the inside, Adrian Fernandez from Mexico City. Starting outside, rookie Mark Taylor from London, England. In the sixth row on the inside, a two-time winner at this racetrack, two-time series champion Sam Hornage for Penske. And outside, Dan Weldon, the winner at Motegi this season. In the seventh row, Vito Mira driving for the uh, Ray Hall Letterman entry. And outside, Darren Manning in car number 10. In the eighth row on the inside, Greg Ray from nearby Plano, Texas. In the Access Motorsports entry. And outside, Scott Dixon, defending series champion. The ninth row on the inside, A.J. Boyd the fourth from Hockley, Texas, in number 14, and outside towards Tagi in number 12. In the tenth row on the inside, number 24 is Felipe Giafoni in the Team Purex Dryer Rainbolt entry, and last year's champion of this event, Al Unser Jr. in the Patrick Racing Stable. The eleventh and final row, Scott Sharp, a two-time winner here at Texas, and outside, Alex Barron driving for Team Cheever. And Alex Barron had uh, problems. He uh, broke a gearbox qualifying. That's the reason he's starting last. This is a 500-kilometer race, 200 laps. Uh, of course, Dario Franchitti starting up front. The pit window, window is going to be about 50 laps, 48 to 52, depending on how many yellows and so forth. They could go as far as maybe 58 if they had a lot of yellow lap times. 31 degrees centigrade. It's a very, very hot day, and the wind is going to be a factor. These things can get blown around quite a bit if it gets to be real windy down here. Well, it's also very humid, Larry, which makes it feel like it's a tad warmer than 31 degrees. Yes, and, it, and it's been, it's rained here a lot. There's mud puddles everywhere because of all the rain and that's added to the humidity and that does affect the uh, cars too. Now, once again the cars start to the field starts to take shape now as we go on board with Scott Dixon starting back in the 16th position might be kind of fun to watch what he can do from back there and there's a Mark Taylor he'll be starting in 10th the rookie driver here and there's a look at uh, Thomas Schechter he's starting in the 8th position in the uh, Panther Pennzoil racing entry and there's Scott Sharp a two time winner here but he's starting way back at the back of the pack. And there's Darren Manning starting in the 14th position. And there is your winner two weeks ago starting outside the pole, Buddy Rice. And the pace car pulls off. We should have the green this time by. They go through the gearbox. The green flag is flying and we are underway. Still side by side through that corner. Now Buddy Rice has the lead over Tony Kanaan. The first half of the field got a very good start. The last half, for some reason, all got bunched up back there and did not get a good start. So two distinct groups on the racetrack right now. And they're still racing side by side. Well, you can see right now they've, uh, they've mostly broken off into single file, but a couple of guys still running side by side. Castro Nevis and Herter right there. So Frankini got the jump. We said Rice, it was Franchitti, but then it was the uh, Canaan team car, number 11, they're in second. The teammates run one, two, and look at this early battle for second position as Rice takes the high groove side by side off the corner, and Rice may have stuck his nose up there. Look how close it is. Well, this is what we've come accustomed to seeing here in Texas is that side by side racing. Rice could not make it uh, past that time. You'll notice a lot of sparks coming off the bottom of the cars. That's because this new configuration, they had to raise the cars up some, and they've got titanium skid pads under them. So when they hit those bumps, they do throw off some sparks. Uh, Rice comes back at Kanan again, side by side across the start finish line. And look at Sura back there in fourth position. Yeah, Matt Sura looked like he might try to go to the bottom side and see what he could do down there, but then he thought better of it and just uh, stayed in line. Well, I tell you what, you cannot measure what an Indy 500 win will do for your... Uh, Confidence. 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 Yeah, he really... 
Uh, right now, Buddy Rice is getting off of turn number two and down that back straightaway really well. Then he goes through three and four, but getting into turn number one, he's not getting into turn number one very well, and he loses everything he gains. Back there with Thomas Schechter right now in the seventh position. There's Herta and uh, Castro Nevitz up there. That's Castro Nevitz directly in front of Schechter. Herta's down low to the left. Yeah, and you can see the Schechter uh, Look at Carpenter. You see Carpenter's nose on the inside. That's the rookie, Ed Carpenter, trying to take that position away from Schechter. And those two guys still. Battle for seventh. Boy, Carpenter looks really good. Oh, Schechter had to get out of the throttle right there. He got a little bit high, had to get out of the throttle. That'll cost him. He lost another spot down the back straightaway. Hornish right behind Schechter. Oh. And this glare, look yeah, at the glare, Larry. Dixon had to get out of the throttle big time right there, and that's going to cost him a little bit of time, too. So up in front, it's still Franchitti. Yeah, Franchitti, Kanan, Rice, those guys maintain the same. Now we've got a challenge for second. Look at the scramble for position down the backstretch. Two, three wide. Matt and look Sura. at Schechter on the high side. He's way up there. Matt Sura moved into third. He got around uh, Buddy Rice. So, well, Schechter now is in ninth, 10th is Weld, and Hornish is 11th. And you're riding along, looking out the back of the uh, Schechter, number four. Now you're riding along with Rice. Rice looks up to the battle for look, second position. And look at Matt Sura. Now he goes to the outside of Kanan. This is the same move that Buddy Rice tried, and it ended up costing him third spot. And Matt Sura's out there. Uh, he's having the same trouble that Buddy Rice had. Well, here Can, comes Rice on the inside. Could not, cannot get through turns one and two, or as nearly as well as he can turns three and four. Look how high the Marlboro cars were, along with Schechter coming off that corner, got very close to the outside wall. Yeah, Castroneves uh, been running that high line the whole race, has not been able to make uh, make it work for him yet, as he's uh, just hasn't been able to pass anybody out there. Tito Mira and Schechter were side by side for eighth position. Now you look back at the. Uh, Sura back there in fourth. Rice wow. is third, and Rice tucks right in behind Kanai. So what? two teammates from Andretti Green run one, two, Frankiti and Kanai. Matt Sura tried to go a little almost three wide there. We've seen Hornish do that one time here at this racetrack, but it doesn't happen very often, and it doesn't work very often either. Look at them stacked up behind Rice. Side by side, two by two down the back stretch. Castro and Evans now has gotten around Carpenter for sixth position. Carpenter drops to seventh. Eighth is Schechter. Ninth is Mira. And tenth now is Hornish. And there's a look at Hornish in car number six. He's back there battling with Fernandez, trying to move up. But uh, just so far, that outside groove has not worked the way he had liked. Now then, coming through that, off the, onto the back straightaway, looked like he made it quite Larry, a as, as they keep running that high groove and laying some rubber down, that high groove may come in as the race continues. Well, we've seen Hornish do that time after time after time. The outside groove has always been his favorite place to run. He just passed two cars right there as he went around Manning and Fernandez both right on that high, high side down in three and four. Well, we expected him to make a move early on, did not qualify all that well. In fact, Hornish began this race in the 11th starting position. Wow, look now at Hornish that. Now is still 11th. Buddy Rice going into turn number three, just went to the high side and just blew by Kanan. Uh, now he sets his sights on the high side of Franchitti as they work on lap number 15. Franchitti has led from the starting green. Well, you can see the guys down in the uh, pits are taking calculations, looking at the, uh, the laps they've run. Just just to make sure everything's going well. Well, now on lap 15, it is Frankiti leading Rice, Kanan, Matsura, Herta, and Mira. And the battle is still up in front as Frankiti tries to hang on to that number one spot under pressure from Buddy Rice. <laughs> The first 15 cars are all just nose to tail, basically. I mean, they're all got a chance right now. This is why Texas is mentally probably one of the toughest tracks on the circuit, because you never get a chance to rest. You always got so many cars around you. You're always trying to make sure you do everything exactly right, because any very, very small mistake is uh, 
could be disastrous here. Well, in two weeks, start. two weeks from now, we head on to Richmond, which is a smaller racetrack than this. You talk about being busy. Right. Phys physically, physically, Richmond might be a little tougher. Mentally, I think this place is because probably higher speed. It's just because of the higher speeds, because you're running side by side so much with everybody, and a very small mistake can put you at both into the wall. You know, you really have to tip your hat to uh, Kim Green and Michael Andretti to field four cars and to remain this competitive with all four inches. Absolutely. Look at Vito Mira. He's come from 13th up there to run fifth. He's really come a long way. Well, as you said, he passed the most cars at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway two weeks ago, but had that penalty, which forced him to put the back of the pack. And once again, here's Kanat on the high side, and he may have him down the back stretch. Yeah, it looked like he got a great run off of turn number two. That seems to be the key here in Texas today. If you can get off of turn number two and get a good run down the back straightaway, you can make the pass going into turn number three. But the whole key is getting off of turn number two. It must be that bump down there in between one and two that's causing everybody to have a problem. And there goes Buddy Rice on the high side of Frankiti. You see a little farther back. That's Weldon and Barron. Weldon on the uh, red and white on the high side. Alex Barron on the low side. He's now running in 13th. Remember, he started dead last. He broke a gearbox while qualifying. Did not get a qualifying. Whoa, we almost took out two target cars in one fell swoop there. Man, that was close. The boss would have not been happy had that happened, but those two guys are really uh, struggling back there trying to gain some speed, but they're back in 14th and 15th and really, really struggling to uh, make up time. Look at this, three abreast going in there. Three wide into the corner. Look at Schechter, he just doesn't look back. That's Carpenter on the inside. Schechter on the outside here. And this is the battle for uh, ninth position. Uh-oh, boy. She, he, oh, he got out. I thought he got loose there. He got way out of the throttle as that thing got uh, up there. I thought he saw him wiggle the wheel, but he must just saw, have seen the yellow and climbed out of the throttle. Well, of course, the yellow light also goes on on the dashboard as well. Uh, looks like, uh, is that wing? A little contact yeah, there. Yeah, made some contact. There's Darren Manning. Manning. That may have been some contact when they got so close earlier. Well, I think we'll have a replay here of exactly what happened. We did not see it from our vantage point. Oh, here it is right here. Oh, he just uh, smoked her up in there. Car. Yeah, he just smoked her up in there and ran in the back of Alex Barron. Barron. Got a run on him. Got a run on him and uh, just couldn't get out of the throttle in time. Now, he... They're definitely going to have to come in and do something on that wing. I mean, he can run, but he's not going to run very fast with that wing like that because it's going to put a lot of lift on that uh, left front so the downforce the way that wing is. Well, we're going to see probably the entire field in the pit area once yeah. that pit area is opened up. 26 laps, so they'll all head into the pit area uh, to make their pit stop. They're, uh, they're not going to pass up too many. They get eight sets of tires. It's a brand new right rear tire that Firestone has designed for this, uh, for this racetrack this year. Uh, so it, it has many trouble. They're very happy with it, but they'll all be coming in on his first chance to change tires and make any adjustments that they need. We've had two leaders so far today. Dario Franchitti from the pole position led the first 22 laps. And just before this yellow, Tony Kanaan went by for the lead on lap 23. And now everybody heads for pit road. Well, as close as these cars are, the pit stops become oh so important. Boy, a miscue in here by either the crew or the driver can cost you big time out there on the racetrack. Track position is so important. Uh oh, look uh -oh. at that. There's a slight miscue right there. He may have lost a couple of positions. Yeah, that took him just a second to get the uh, get that, uh, that overflow. traffic jam coming out. The overflow out of there, and it cost him a little time in the pits. Of course, the Manning crew, the Target Ganassi crew, can make the necessary changes under yellow, so he should be able to remain on the lead lap. Yeah. Looks like they put a whole new nose on that thing with uh, new wings, or at least new wings on it, because they're. He's got the new uh, nose piece on there. So Kanan will retain the top spot on the pit stops. Uh, no, wait, let's check that. No, I, I don't think so. He did not get out first. Timing and scoring is still showing Kanan as the leader, but. You know, he's Buddy Rice back there. That's Buddy Rice. I think Matt, uh, there must be Matt Sura that won, won the pit stop contest there. So we'll sort out this uh, restart after this uh, the pit stop under yellow as we have completed 27 laps here in Texas.
Well, let's, uh, we're just discussing here, uh, as you rejoin us, welcome by the way, um, what actually happened there, because I presume that the damage to the car was the yellow flag incident, but you say it actually was a result of the yellow flag. Uh, when the yellow flag was thrown, it appeared that, that Darren touched the back of Alex just because he got off the throttle that momentarily after Alex had, and he slowed up earlier, and obviously that's where they touched. I think we'll find that they threw the yellow just for debris. Right. Which is the uh, reason they look for little rocks and things if somebody's got a cut tyre. Well, Darren exited the Indy 500 in spectacular stars. The last thing he wanted was this. Yes, uh, the position he was in, he didn't need that, but however, because there was a yellow, they were able to come in and make a pit stop. They'll have a new nose on that and fuel it in the same time as changing the tyres. So I don't think he's lost out that badly. Well, we can look at it again here. And this is one driver braking before another. Basically, yes. You don't get a clear line of sight, and some people are very hard on the brakes, and some people aren't. Johnny, you've been there, mm. done it, and all the rest of it. Now, I, I was saying to you earlier on, this is open-wheel racing, but these guys don't seem to know or care. Well, I mean, they do get very, very close, and there's a lot of trust involved, you know, with other drivers. Uh, you have to, to know that they're going to stay online uh, when you're running that close on the outside. And, I mean, they have to trust that you're not going to come down too low and hit them either. Uh, Travelling at those speeds, if you do contact, it can be uh, disastrous. It's a question of, of where you hit as well. It isn't just everywhere you touch you're in trouble. No, I mean, you, you can touch side to side and, and get away with it, but obviously if you touch wheel to wheel, there's so much rotation, it just throws the car in the air. And uh, you know, once one of these cars is airborne, it can go anywhere. Still under a yellow. So if we didn't see a collision, and we have been watching this, <laughs> where did they get the debris from? Um, they get reports from all around the track from the various marshal stations and they say, OK, there's a little bit of something. They are very, very cautious because at the speeds these guys are travelling, the smallest stone or piece of plastic can rupture a tyre with disastrous consequences. So, you know, it's very much the safe thing to do. And everybody's now fuelled up. Everybody's got a new set of remoulds. Yeah, it's almost like the start of another race. So. Uh you know, it hasn't really changed the strategy for anyone at the moment. I don't think it's too early for that. But, uh, you know, Dario looks like he's got some pretty good speed and, and so does Tony. And, you know, them being teammates, they will probably try and work together and, and try and keep at the front and uh, dominate and do what they want to do, really. Keeping at the front is good and bad, isn't it? Well, it is. Uh, I mean, you're... you're have all the air in front of you and uh, you create a hole for the people behind you that's why they all stay so close um, you know you can draft so much in one of these cars it makes you know 10 15 miles per hour difference and uh, that's what makes it great racing okay let's get back to texas and rejoin our commentary team They are harder to drive, and that's that's good. It makes the puts the driver back into the equation some. These cars aren't sucked to the ground near as tight. They lack about 400 pounds of downforce less than they had last year. So that makes them a little harder to drive. puts makes the driver drive them a little harder, and that uh, I think that helps because when a guy makes a mistake and has to lift out of the throttle, he loses all that momentum, and it takes you a while to get get that back up. So. It's all about keeping your foot down, being brave enough to do that. Now, look at Kanan. Back up in front. Here comes Tony Kanan. No team orders in this organization. Side by side. And Rice has a bird's eye view right back there in third position. Still side by side for the lead. Yeah, you can see Rice. He's trying to feel. Oh, no. He's going to make it three abreast. He thought about it. He tried to make it three abreast. He just didn't have room. One thing about Texas, uh, Brian Barnhart is more warned them no blocking this is a very hard place to pass if a guy's blocking so you notice going down that back straightaway especially when they come off of there they don't come off and go clear to the wall the guys on the inside stay pretty low and they don't want to give a guy a chance to get in underneath them well Kanan's going to get uh -oh. uh, Schechter in the pit area unscheduled pit stop for Thomas Schechter Sounds like Schechter uh, they're going to change now something else going on I thought they were going to change tires but he's got a problem Something happened on the restart. Oh, oh right, right there. there. Contact. Contact. That was on the restart a couple of laps ago. Look at this. 
Well, he got, we said he got three wide, and boy, he did. He got hit. Oh, how front. lucky are those two guys not to be airborne when they man. interlock the wheels? Man, oh, man, that was unbelievable. That was some pretty heavy contact. Well, Kanan and teammate uh, Frank Keedy going at it right now. Kanan gets uh, credit for leading one more lap. Well, Schechter, uh, he had no idea Schechter was on the outside of him, and they made contact. I'm surprised they both don't have problems after that contact. Well, they both didn't develop a huge wreck out there. That could have been nasty. Yeah, could have. Schechter yep. leaves the pit area again. Well, all his... The inside comes Fran Keaty, who's going to lead this lap. Well, still cannot. Look at Mira. Mira on the high side for third position. Vito Mira just went around his teammates, so Vito Mira from 13th to third now. There's a look at Greg Ray in the Access Motorsports number 13. Notice the uh, absence of sponsorship logos on that race car. It's Manning. He's on the outside of Darren Manning right now, trying to get up, get by Manning. And we oh. have a crash. The second yellow of the afternoon. That is A.J. Foyt. Look out. He's heading down to the inside. Oh, it looks like everybody's going to make it around now, but uh, he's Obviously, there's no brakes on that thing. Once you hit the wall, knock the wheels off of them, breaks all the brake lines, and you're just along for the ride. The uh, cables did do their jobs. All the wheels are still on with the race car. Of course, that was a huge problem early on in the IRL, those wheels coming off. And there you can there's see. There's looking at Grandpa. He's, as soon as he finds out uh, his grandson is okay. Then he'll start yelling at him. Yeah, then he'll start yelling at him. But he wants... <laughs> And everybody wants to make sure a driver's okay. After hard contact like that, obviously, he got in the wall pretty hard. Uh, he's very concerned at this point, but uh, looks like he's talking to him on the radio. Hopefully, he's talking to him on the radio. He's talking to somebody on the radio. You wonder what they talk about at family gatherings. <laughs> hard to tell. <laughs> we you talked know. about that two weeks ago at the at the Speedway, Larry, how difficult it would be to drive for A.J. Foyt as his grandson and as, uh, as the car owner. Well, he, he, A.J. Foyt can be one of the toughest guys in the world. I mean, he can just really, really be a honorary son of a gun. But at the same time, uh, he can be a very compassionate guy. We went to a, a memorial service for former driver Johnny Boyd, and, and A.J. gave a, a little eulogy, and it was very, he's a very compassionate guy away from the racetrack, but boy, at the racetrack, he is very tough. The backboard was out, but will not be employed as uh, A.J. climbs out under his own power. Well, that's always good news to see a guy actually walking away from a crash. Uh, see, like what, see what happens. Well, it oh. looked like he got across the back of somebody. Yeah, it looked like he hit somebody. The, the left front wheel of that thing was off before he ever got into the wall, so uh, he might have hit somebody in the rear end or either that or the, the suspension broke because uh, the left front wheel was off before he ever got to the wall. Dr. Henry Bach, the medical director, is in that uh, unit right there as uh, Foyt climbs in and takes a ride to the infield care center. For a, a genuine incident, it wasn't just debris this time. No, there was some debris after it, but uh, certainly uh, young AJ, uh, again, I, I, I hate to keep saying it, but he's making a, a fair habit of having accidents. Um, and this here, he uh, had clearly just tripped up on uh, Felipe Giafoni. Um, AJ had got shuffled to the back of the pack in that pit stop, so he uh, was right at the back. And as you see, he just caught the rear tire there of Felipe Giafoni, and uh, that caused him to hit the wall. The way it's going, Johnny, there's not likely to be an A.J. Foyt the fifth, is there? Well, <laughs> I mean, you see how far the car goes when, uh, when it does have a problem. You know, that's when you realise just how quick these cars are travelling. You know, I, when everything's under control, it just, you know, feels normal. But when, as soon as you have a problem, uh, you realise just how fast you're travelling. I asked you earlier, why is it such a problem to go high? Well, the, the outside of the circuit is generally more dirty than, than the inside. And... Uh, obviously gives you less grip so if the car does move around you've less room then to to correct it before you're in the wall so uh, you know some drivers like taking the high line it can it can sometimes help your car set up a little bit um, by running a bit higher rather than to trying to keep really tight at the bottom of the circuit but it does have its risks having gone high and crashed he was still in danger of causing another accident at the end of all that 
Yes, unfortunately, once you start knocking all the wheels off, you start becoming a passenger and uh, you're not responsible for the direction it takes. Um, and as we saw, he did drop very, very low. Fortunately, it just uh, then went back up to the wall uh, and there was no harm done. But when a car's having an accident, the first impact is the one you've got to look and follow from from there on because once you become a passenger, it's so, so dangerous. Just caught a glimpse of uh, the current race position, Tony Canaan. Your man, early days of course, out there in front. <laughs> yeah, both the Andretti green cars at the front look uh, really good. But, um, you know, there's a lot of cars that are running quickly at the moment. No one's really got away from any anyone at the moment. So uh, I think we've got a good race ahead of us. Can we, uh, should we have expected Dan Weldon to have made his move yet? Well, actually, Dan is now up, when I last had a look on the computer, was running in seventh place. Uh, he did very, very well in the pit stops, as Johnny and I were just discussing. Andretti Green are so slick in the pits. They're probably the slickest team out there now. Uh, and that's, that's what it is, it's track position, and he's, he's now in the front half of the grid. Um, so that'll help him. I think he'll probably get to the podium. And what about rookie Japanese drivers? What's the state of play there? Well, as we said at the beginning, I mean, the guy is just phenomenal, isn't he? He's dicing there, even with his own teammate. Um, and, you know, not being silly about it, being very professional. Uh, and he's hanging in there in fourth place. It's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah, very good showing. Um, you know, if he can keep this up and, and get on the podium, it'd be a massive result for him. Your old housemate, Dario, uh, he's been at the front, he's obviously still in contention. Is he doing what somebody of his experience ought to be doing? Yeah, I mean, I think he's been very unlucky so far this year. Um, you know, he's shown in champ cars that he can win races, and he's been very fast in all the races up till now, uh, including the Indy 500 qualified on the front row. So, uh, you know, he knows he can do it, the team knows he can do it, uh, he can do it, so uh, it's just a matter of putting it all together and, you know, this weekend might be that weekend. Okay, I think the best pictures of the whole race may be Grandpa Foyt meeting Grandson Foyt, but I don't suppose either are going to meet one, one another too soon. Let's get back to the commentary team. Right now being pressured by uh, Matsura, but still up in front, it's Tony Kanaan and his teammate Dario Franchitti. Yeah, Franchitti having a very good run. Rice, uh oh. Another yellow. Somebody else into the wall. That's one of the Red Bull cars. Is that 52 or 51? Can't see from this angle which one it is. Now, if that's the 52 of Carpenter, could that be an aftermath of the contact with Foyt? It is. It is 52. Yeah. And it, he might have, Foyt uh, might have hit him, and that could be a problem. If he hit the right rear, the suspension might have failed on that right rear and caused him to get into the wall. Well, it, that was the, uh, it appeared that the contact was made with the, with the right corner of this car. Yeah, I mean, obviously the left front wheel was off of AJ's car before he hit the wall, which would indicate that he hit the right rear uh, of Carpenter's car. And Eddie climbs out. He's okay. Immediately walks over to uh, Dr. Box truck, leaves the helmet on for the ride back to the infield. Well, he is not very happy. He could tell just by the, his mannerisms that he's uh, pretty upset with what just happened. But boy, when you get banged here, just like we said earlier about the Schechter uh, um, Manning deal or Dixon, I, I'm not, which one would, it, would he run into? Who was that, Dixon or Manning that got Well, they're right side by side. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell which one it was. Anyway, uh, you know, it's amazing they didn't both have trouble because I let's take a, excuse me, Laurie, let's take a look again and see if in fact we can pick out exactly what happens here. Uh, this is late in the crash sequence, so yeah. he's already in. But uh, obvious, I think it's obvious to anybody who pays much attention that that thing broke and put him into the wall because that was only a very, very short. Uh, yeah, you can see right there. But still, the question that we have is, was something broken on the race car because of that earlier contact? Oh, I, I'm, I would be willing to bet that it was. Something, because there was very little green flag time. I mean, he had hardly any time on there uh, after that last yellow. So uh, the yeah, first Realistically, time, although these cars run over 200 miles an hour, they're very fragile. Oh, they're Slight very fragile. Slight contact and they're torn up. The wishbones. Oh, yeah, you can see right something there. Was yeah, it, something was broken. Something was broken. He drove into the wall. Yeah. Yeah, the slow motion tells the tale as it was dead. Look at the debris all over the Flames. racetrack. Uh, but something was broken, and it just absolutely went right straight up to the wall. Look at Schechter. Boy, he's dodged a few bullets here today, hadn't he? But uh, tough break for Eddie Carpenter, but I'm sure that was all a result 
of that other incident when he moved over to miss his teammate and was hit by a j point but i know that brian barnhart has been preaching this week to these guys he's had several meetings with them and and one of his quotes was i don't want to take anybody out of here on a stretcher uh and it's kind of saying i want you guys to respect each other race hard don't be blocking uh this is a dangerous racetrack it is when you're racing this fast this close it's a dangerous racetrack and for the most part they've done that i think as we approach the quarter way mark of this race as we approach 50 of the 200 laps uh, we're under our third yellow of the day yes and um two of the uh three yellows have resulted really from the same incident even though the crisis happened at two different times uh both of those last two in the wall incidents were a result of of one happenstance on the racetrack when first yellow was uh, Darryl right. Manning uh, I mean uh, Darren Manning made some contact and uh, broke his wing that was back on lap 26 we were under yellow for five laps at that point then uh, AJ Foyt's contact with the wall brought the yellow for six laps on lap 39 and now we're under our third yellow that came out on lap 47 when Eddie Carpenter made contact and uh, the pits are open and we're going to have pit stops now they run they're running them down through there running through the pit area I think the pits are open but uh, most of these guys aren't stopping, but they're taking them down through there. Well, because some of them are stopping. Yeah, some of them are stopping, and they are allowed to stop. But they are taking these guys down through the pits because of all the debris on the race. Pensky crew stopping. That was for uh, fuel only. Oh, oh boy. How close that was. Yeah, that was Allinger uh, Jr. Alan pulling Jr. in as he was trying to go out. This is going to be. Uh, the guys are electing to make uh, pit stops for fuel only on lap 50. As the uh, pits have been open, they've taken the field down through the pit area because of all the debris on the racetrack, and some of the teams did uh, elect to stop. Schechter's uh, picking not in. a mandatory pit stop here. No, it was not a mandatory pit stop. Some of them stopped. But Schechter's putting on. What's Oops. the problem? We got a car. Uh, Listen, how did this happen? I think the. Uh, I think they're trying to get that out of there without getting on the grass. There's, it's rained so much. It's so soft and muddy in there. They don't want to pull that record down into that mud and get it stuck. So they tried to pull it out of there, and all they did was Roll tip it over. Yeah, turned it over when they because it's uh, so muddy. It dug in instead of sliding on the grass. So I'm not sure what they're going to do to get it out of there. But but uh, well, let's look again. Top of the screen. Right, right there. Let's see if we can see if see something breaks right. Oh, yeah, they broke something broke right there on the right broke rear. on the right rear that you can see the suspension broke the bottom the right rear corner of the car is dragging on the ground and that's why he hit the, the fence and as we suspected it almost certainly was a result of the contact that he and AJ Boyd had earlier so uh, I don't think there's any question that uh, both of those wall incidents were caused from the same incident when they got together the first time. And you're right, Larry, they, they don't they don't want no. that big heavy wrecker now on the grass. Put him in the mud. He's gonna be <laughs> you're gonna have to pull him out with the him out. With three yellow flags, four collisions, and this one for perhaps the most spectacular of the lot. Yes, um, poor old Ed Carpenter was quite clearly a uh, passenger in this whole event. Um, I was under the impression that the uh, previous shunt with AJ was uh, Felipe Giafoni, but uh, we're led to believe now that the other car involved was Ed Carpenter. And coming into uh, turn three, I think, there, the rear suspension collapsed on the restart, causing what can be described as a fairly spectacular accident. Johnny, when something like this happens, and it appears to have been a suspension failure, uh, do you drive the car or just wait? Well, I mean, everything happens so quickly. Uh, by the time you've actually realized that, that something's broken on the car, you're virtually at the wall anyway. Um, you obviously, you don't really want to be on the pedals or, or holding the steering wheel too much, but uh, unfortunately, instinct takes over sometimes, and you know that's when you can damage a wrist or, or an ankle. Um, if you hit the wall at a, at a different angle. Um, but, you know, the team, I think the team's a little bit at fault there. Uh, if they know that their car was involved in that earlier accident, they should have really had a very good look at that rear suspension. I mean, we commented on it, you know, looking from here. 
and uh, you know any contact with another car and those speeds and that much load going through the suspension you really have to look at it very closely so when Carpenter got out and he was obviously angry was that anger being directed at AJ or his team um, I would think it's probably you know going to be AJ at the end of the day he's certainly not going to blame his team however as we were all discussing here earlier the AJ and him if those were the two parties a lot of that was down to the spotters. Now, we've said on, on previous programs here that these drivers all have somebody in a high tower watching their every move and calling cars either side of them. And really, the spotter is at fault for missing how close he was to AJ if that was the situation. And here's the result. But Johnny is right. The, the team should have automatically said, we need you in here. You'd lose half a lap, but they've now lost the race and probably $200,000. This uh, track known for close racing, is this what happens then, a track where um, competition is so intense? Yeah, I mean, obviously everyone's running so close together and, uh, you know, the slightest little movement in the car you have to correct and you can uh, get tangled up with someone else. So, uh, and, you know, these high speeds, everyone running so close, you know, that's what the fans go to see, really. Well, they've had plenty already, and we we'll <laughs> hardly uh, any way through it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, a certain gentleman who started on the sixth row is doing quite well for himself. Yes, Dan has taken advantage of the, of the pit stops and the situation to put himself in sixth place. Um, it's still early days in the race, but as I said uh, before, he's moved himself into the front part of the pack. They're the ones moving all the time, uh, and by that I mean he's not got to do too much aggressive work. He can stay just with the pack. He needs to finish as close as he can to Tony, if not ahead of Tony, to retain his lead. As we can see, they're still under a yellow. Uh, quite a lot of clearing up after that one I would have thought and they can't even use their dumper truck. No, there's, uh, there's a lot of fluid that's come out of that car whether it's uh, gearbox oil or engine oil or, or radiator fluid um, so you know they need to get that cleared up before we can get back underway. That's one major difference between uh, Formula One and any car racing. I mean, the Indy 500 spoilt by rain because they just don't work on wet surfaces? No, I mean, uh, they have a rule about uh, a certain amount of precipitation that uh, can fall before they have to stop the race. But, um, you know, uh, we, we keep going on about the high speed that they're doing. But, you know, at Indy 500, you're averaging 220 miles an hour. And on slick tires with rain around, you really don't want to be out there. I still want to see AJ meet his grandpa. <laughs> I would think it'd be an interesting one. <laughs> You'll be able to hear it over the noise of the engines, do you reckon? I think they're probably discussing quite amiably the cost of repairing the car for the next event. Dan doing well, going quietly up through the field, yeah. uh, and Dario taking advantage as well, do you think? Yeah, I think uh, him and Tony uh, have been at the front from the start of the race. You know, they're obviously happy with their cars, uh, they've both had good pit stops. So, um, you know, the team Andretti Green seems to be doing a, a good job so far. And every time they stop the tyres, it costs $200,000. Even my wife can't incur charges like that. Let's rejoin our commentary team. The restart room will be Kanan, Frankiti, Rice, Mira, Herda, and Weldon. We still have one lap to go. You see the lights are now on as dusk has overtaken Texas Motor Speedway. As a driver, Larry, is, is it fun to start in the daylight and end after dark? I, don't, I think the drivers would prefer to have it all the same. It, you have to adjust the car a lot less. You can uh, set the car up a lot easier if it's all going to be done either at the, in the night or in the daytime. Because when it's like this, it'll change. Because when the sun goes down, the racetrack will get cooler. The race cars will tighten up some. You'll have some make some adjustments uh, with your wings and so forth to take away. And right now, you can see it's... Uh, yeah. But anyway, it's, it's uh, very, very difficult because it's sunny right now and then it's shady and part of the racetrack. All right, green flag out this time by Kanan, Frankiti, Rice, and Mira. Mira didn't get a real good restart that time, but his teammate Rice did. Right away, Frank Kitty takes a look to the high side, and here comes Rice back there in third, and he goes even higher. Now tucks in behind him, now looks to the low side, going into turn three, elected not to. Yeah, I thought better of that, uh, gonna give him the time, but uh, he just, he just, that was a wise move. Too early in the race to make, do something silly right now. Yeah, but look at this. Here comes Mira on the high side on his teammate. Well, it gives Mira, once you get out of the throttle, 
It gives the guy behind you a little bit of a run on you. Mira had a little bit of a run, uh, tried to go to the outside, couldn't make it work, though. And Herta and Weldon. Herta back in uh, fifth position. Weldon is sixth. Thomas Schechter has climbed out of car number four, so apparently his race is over. Well, it's a tough break for him. You can see back in the pack, this guy's still battling each other side by side as we ride along with Scott Sharp. Scott's back there in the 14th position. That's Giafoni up in front of him. Giafoni took over the Robbie Buell ride when Robbie retired as a driver. And there is Schechter taking the uh, long walk back to the pit area. And when you leave your helmet on or back to the Roger, it, it kind of says to the media, leave me alone. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, not going to talk about it right now. Give me time to cool off. He's not very happy. Again, you're right along with Scott Sharp. Giafoni, then Manning up in front of Giafoni, then Matsura and Castro Nevitt. So, uh, yeah, you can see right there, he got a little bit wide, had pushed the front end a little bit, had to get out of the throttle, then he shifted down, downshifted. They've got two top gears on these things, the bottom, you know, one a little bit lower than the other, and he shifted down to the, uh, to the one, the lower gear to get a little more speed. Well, in 12 starts, he's won twice here. Bates there on the screen. Well, there goes Hornish on the outside of him. Remember, Hornish made that last second pit stop, and uh, now he's moved his way back up around several guys. He was clear back in, I think, 19th position after that last pit stop. Look at this. Fernandez way outside for yep. a while. Finally decided that wasn't the place to be and decided to fall back in behind. High side of Danny Weldon. That, that's Mark Taylor right behind Fernandez. There's a look at the Delphi number eight of Scott Sharp. That's the Kelly Racing Team. We told you Kelly and Panther Racing had won eight of the last ten events here. There's Kelly won with Al Unser Jr. last year. Al who started the season without a ride and put a program together with uh, Pat Patrick for Indianapolis. And now we're here for the rest of this season. Wow. Along with Buddy Rice back there in third. That's Frankini right in front of you. And up above Frankini will be the leader, Kanan. Now, yeah, Buddy Rice goes to the inside. He's been trying on the outside. Now it looks like he's going to try on the inside. Now you go back to Weldon and Fernandez in the number five entry. And then Mark Taylor in the blue number two. Back up in front. It's still Kanan and Frankini as we look back in traffic. There's the uh, number six of Hornish back in 12th position. Yeah, and I'm not sure what Hornish did on that last pit stop, but uh, he made he made another tire change. I don't know whether the new tires are that much better or not, but he he's passed a lot of cars, more cars than he's passed all day long, as he's coming up there pretty quickly. This goes by his teammate, like uh, Castro Nevis isn't even on the racetrack. He was painted right there on the wall. Wow. So Hornish right now up to 11th position. That's Dixon. He's on the outside side of Dixon. The 100 right 211 that last lap, 211, and that was the fastest lap that last time around. So right now he is the number six car, is the fastest car on this racetrack. Well, right now he looks like the Sam Hornish we've seen here run for the last uh, several years, as he's really just been in and out of traffic and. Go getting by one or two cars every lap. Now then he's on the outside of Cat or uh, uh, Dixon and hasn't uh, made much ground since he's been outside of him. Now you go back to the teammates running together. That's uh, Fernandez and Matsura. Matsura in that uh, number 55 and the five of Fernandez. And that's back the battle for eighth position. Only two leaders so far today, Frankiti and Kanan. Well, look at this. There goes Rice on the inside for second position, overtakes Frankiti. Now let's see what he can do with Kanan. And here comes Vito Mira back there in the fourth. Yeah. And fifth is Weldon. Frankiti had to let him go. Once he got down on the inside of him, he had to let him go. But he got a great run off of turn number two and just dove to the inside. He tried on the outside for several laps, couldn't make the pass on the outside, but did make it work on the inside. Well, Mark Taylor had a good ride. He's up there in the sixth position right now. Taylor started back in 10th. So the 
Battle of Indy two weeks ago continues on here this evening. As your Indy winner rides in second, and second place at Indy, Tony Kanaan rides out in front. Yeah. Quite honestly, even though the race was shortened by 50 miles, uh, 20 laps, I don't think anybody had anything for Buddy Rice at Indianapolis. Now, Buddy Rice was definitely the fastest car there, uh, had been all day long, and he deserved to win the race. He, he just Went was... full position. Yep. They also won the uh, pit stop competition as well, so they did the trifecta. Take a look at the uh, race summary after uh, 71 laps. Tony Kanaan had to follow Dario Franchitti for the first 22 circuits. He took the lead. Ooh. That was where Manning ran up on the back and bent the front wing. This is Shetek. Shetek right here on that restart. Oh, man. Yeah, that's eventually put Schechter out of the race. There's the Foyt crash that did the suspension damage to number 52 that eventually put Ed Carpenter out of the race. And there's the Ed Carpenter uh, incident a few laps later, the next green flag lap. So Foyt, Carpenter, Thomas Schechter out of the race. You saw Thomas walking back to the garage area with the helmet still on. Don continues to lead. This wow. is the second time he's led here this afternoon, but he's been leading since lap 34. We're on lap 74 right now. Vito Mira just went around the outside of Franchitti back there. Just looked like uh, no effort at all. As he just blew by him down that back straightaway. Here comes Hornish. Over the outside of Herda. Right along with Dixon back there in the, uh, he's in back the 12th in, position. Yeah, Dixon... He got up to ninth a few laps ago as a result of all those pit stops, but he just, he's not having a good day. Probably the worst day I've seen Dixon have realistically since he's been in the IRL. He's just not been in the hunt all day long. For Ride with reason. the rookie, Mark Taylor. He's up in the fifth position right now. That's Frank Keedy out in front of him. And, uh, well, there goes Matsura. Matsura just went around Taylor for fifth. Now, but Taylor having a good run. That's a good run for you, that young guy. He's really, uh, he's been very consistent, very strong all day long, right up there with the big dogs. And Masura looks to the high side of Franchitti. That's the battle for fourth. Kanan leads it. Now, here's a battle for position. Oh, Almost boy. contact as Taylor goes to the inside of Masura. Woo, hold your breath. There was almost contact there. Kanan leads this thing over Rice. Rice's teammate Mira is right there in third. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, not sure I knew he was out there. Look at that. Almost oh. contact right there between Weldon and uh, Mira. And that's how quickly things can happen here at this racetrack. Man, oh man, Larry. Now that's then, why you talk about this being so mentally demanding. Oh, yeah. Now then, Frank Keaty got back to the inside of Mira, going down the back straightaway, goes back around him. Again, almost contact as Taylor got a good run on Mira, and he went by him, too. So Mira drops two positions in less than one lap. Mira finds himself back in fifth position. And still up in front is Tony Kanai. Buddy Rice is in second, Frank Keaty third, Mira... Yeah, Mira's back in fifth place fifth, now. Yeah, That's her sixth. Fourth. And then Hornish is uh, seventh. Best ride we've seen for uh, Sam for a while. Yeah, Sam, he was pretty much just another race car until after that last pit stop. And he came all the way from, I think it was 19th at the time. Now we're up to sixth place. So he's made huge strides since that last pit stop. They must have made some tire adjustments or some chassis adjustments that made a huge difference to his race car. But that's what it takes. You've got to go in. You've got to work on them a little bit. Now you can see almost the whole racetrack is in the shadows. Almost the whole racetrack is, uh, does not have the sun shining on it, whereas just a few laps ago, almost half of the racetrack still had the sun on it. So we may see as this race progresses, we get into the uh, next round of pit stops, we can see some wing adjustments. Well, probably will because uh, the race cars are going to change as the sun keeps going further and further behind the clouds. Now Dixon loses. Uh, that was Herta in yeah, the uh, number spot. seven car. That is for eighth position. Dixon has actually gained two or three spots. He's back in 12th. He back up to uh, had gained back up to eighth, and now then he lo just lost another spot. 
This racetrack is very tricky. You, you, when you run two top gears, you've got to know which gear to be in and what kind of at what time. Uh, the guys who really have that figured out, like Hornish, are the guys who do really do well here. Well, Kanan Rice and Frankini all have the Hondas. Taylor with the Chevrolet. So Honda has four, make that five the top six positions with Taylor Chevrolet in fourth. So a good accounting for the rookie. Well, it certainly is. Uh, highest uh, operating Chevrolet on the racetrack. And like we said, he's been kind of up uh, running back in the seventh, eighth place. But now that he's right up there, he's been very steady. But he's up with the big dogs. With the big dogs, that's right. The tall dogs. Now that he goes to the outside, look at this, to the outside of Fran Keaty. Tucked right behind them is Mira with a good view of this battle. Here comes Harnish on the high side of Matsura. So Harnish now back in his patented high groove. Harnish now in sixth position. He has made that work better than any driver ever here at Texas Motor Speedway. Right now, uh, trying to run that high groove, he's been running it all day long. But, uh, and he's made it work all the way up to, to uh, six spot, but it's having trouble when he got up that far. Well, the two, uh, the Manning and Dixon cars are together on the racetrack in the ninth and 10th position, but 85 and 200 laps now complete. Whatever happened to him, they had to get out of the throttle. He lost a lot of ground on the racetrack, and uh, that ground is tough to make up. It's tough to pass those guys. You know, when you got guys like Harnish and Matsura and Taylor, all those guys up in front of you, uh, very, very tough to lose that many spots all at one time. Well, only two leaders so far today, Dario Franchitti and Tony Kanan. Kanan now uh, on lap 92, and he's led since lap 34. Well, pit stops are going to be coming up here in another uh, 10 or 12 laps, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what happens with those pit stops. Of course, Hornish is going to be able to run longer than anybody in the racetrack because he stopped very, very late in that last yellow. Vito Mira continues to drop off. Yeah, he's falling way back. back all about of a 11th position. Greg Ray just got by the number 13. So Mira is back to 11th. Whatever trouble been like in fourth position, right? Whatever trouble he's experiencing. It wasn't just a it was more than just getting right, on the throttle, right? Whatever it was, it's an ongoing problem and he's uh, continues to fall back and he'll probably stop be one of the first to stop to try to make an adjustment on his race car. If they don't get a yellow here pretty soon. Right along with Darren Manning. Manning right now back in the seventh position. Manning has been involved in a couple of close calls here this afternoon. Let's see what happened here. Watch number 10. Oh, and he oh got boy. squeezed up there by Herta. Wow. He and got he... squeezed in the fence and just didn't make it by. Now watch this. Along for the ride, he gets. Oh. Man, I, I thought they touched. The first time I saw that replay, I thought they touched, but they didn't. And he uh, made a very daring move, and it paid off. But boy, oh boy. Could have been a disaster, too. But realistically, Larry, this is what we've come to expect at this racetrack. It is so close, so fast, that uh, close calls are commonplace. You ha and you have to take a risk once in a while. There's no other way to win here at Texas. If you don't take a risk, you're not going to win here. you got to be good in traffic. Here we oh, go. Here's Mark Taylor, the first of our leaders to come in. This is a routine pit stop, scheduled pit stop. Well, he uh, looked like a pretty good pit stop for that young man. Uh, the crew did their job. He did a pretty nice job. 60 mile an hour pit lane speed. And Buddy Rice peels off and heads for the attention of the Ray Hall Letterman team. As we told you earlier, Bobby Ray Hall is not here this evening. In fact, this weekend he is in Montreal, Canada with his 15 year old son, Graham. He was racing in the BMW support race in the Canadian Grand Prix. Bobby will be with Graham again next weekend at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the U.S. Grand Prix. Uh, some front wing adjustments for uh, Buddy Rice. That's what we really expected once yeah. the track started to cool off. 5.9 second pit stop. Wow, that's a very quick pit stop. Uh oh, uh oh. There's the hose still attached, and then they say, oh, heck, go ahead and go. Well, that was Weldon. 
Yeah, we have seen them pull over those those uh, fuel tanks when that happened before. And uh, we don't want to see that because that makes a heck of a mess, plus such a really bad situation for fire. But uh, well, Kanan has made his stop. Yeah, these guys are making the pit stops a little sooner than I thought. They started stopping on lap 40 with only 43 laps down. So now they've only had 46, so they're stopping sooner than I had expected. I thought they'd make it at He's least 48 laps. leader of the race. That is Matsura. So he picks up the lead on lap 99. Well, he's going to have to come in pretty soon. I don't think he made a uh, pit stop during that last yellow, so he's going to have to come in uh, very shortly. Uh, Manning is now running in second. I think he did make a pit stop. And, of course, Hornishu's in third. He definitely made a pit stop. He was the last guy to pit on that last yellow. So we'll see Dr Greg Ray is out there. I think he made a late pit stop, and I think Dixon did too. So And Greg Ray just passed Sam Hornish. So Greg Ray really making a move here late in the going. Sura leading his first laps of uh, this season. So now when will the rest of them? We've gone halfway. Uh, of course, we talked a lot about going halfway at the Indy Motor Speedway two weeks ago because of the weather situation. Weather is not a factor here as far as the potential of shortening this race. We'll go the distance. It's uh, muggy, very yeah. warm. Now you're looking out of rain. Looking at Hornish and Greg Ray. Let's take a look at that this replay pit stop. of Weldon's pit stop. All right, you can see everything looks routine at this point. The tires are on. Now, he's watching the guy on his right front tire. He's watching the guy on his right. They tell him to go, but see, they, he did the right thing. He did what he was told, but the what happened was the fuel hose got out, but the vent hose did not. But that was not Dan Weldon's fault because the guy on the right front told him to go, and that's exactly what he did. Well, Matsura leads. Manning is second, looking back to Hornish, who's third. Ray is now fourth. Dixon is fifth. Castro Nevitz now has gotten around Dixon as Dixon peels off for the uh, pit area. So all these guys we're talking about right now have yet to make their pit stops. Yeah, they'll. Uh, everybody's going to have to stop for too much longer. Once again, we'll see if we have a good clean pit stop here and get that uh, vent tube out of there. See, they have a different setup. They've got their vent yeah. tube and their uh, fueling hose with the same guy with all in one setup, and uh, that seemed to work a lot better. So when will, here comes Scott Sharp. Sharp had been up to seventh position as he pulls in to the attention of the Kelly racing team. He's got that helmet cam. That was exactly what he sees when he pulls into the pit area. And Matsur will come in, and that will turn the lead over to Sam Hornish. Sam will become the uh, fourth leader here in this race. And Sir and Manning both coming in exactly the same time. Now there's an adjustment again to the front wing, just as we had anticipated. Oh, boy. There's some of these guys are really having trouble with those fuel hoses, getting them out of there. And Sir is on the ball. They uh, they got it out on the second jerk. Greg Ray, Hornish led for a lap. Greg Ray is now your leader. Well, they both of those guys are going to have to stop pretty shortly too. They've uh, they've run over 50 laps. What a shot in the arm for Greg Ray, though. Uh, he qualified this car with only 15 laps of practice at Indianapolis. Comes back here, qualifies, and look at that. Currently up in front. Yeah. Well. Home state, it's got to be a big deal for him. And here comes Sam Hornish. We knew he was going to have to stop before too much longer. There he is. Let's see if things go well for him. Looked like a perfect pit stop. Astro Nevis stays out for at least one more lap. He is in second position. Greg Ray has run 55 laps since his last pit stop. He and Castro Nevis both, so they're both going to have to make a pit stop very shortly. They, I don't think they can. There he comes. There, there he comes Greg Ray. Pulls off. So that will make Castro Nevitz the sixth different leader today. It's Allinger Jr. who's just made his pit stop, heading back out on the racetrack. He was running currently sixth when he went into the pit area. Here comes Greg Ray. With the absence of sponsorship, uh, 
identity on that race car. Some good exposure like this may help him give some more sponsorship money. He is part owner in Access Racing out of Plano, Texas. Helps run his family's marine operation. And here comes Castro Nevis. He'll be the last one after 57 laps to make a pit stop. That's really stretching it. He stretched it longer than anybody else. A lot of those were yellow flag laps, but still. That would give the lead back to Kanan. And right where we were before, Kanan, Rice, and Frankiti before we started to make the pit stops. And then Herta, Taylor, and Mira. See that water? They squirt water right on the fuel just in case there's any chance a spark might uh, ignite a fire. They squirt water as soon as they pull those uh, fuel hoses the water out. will neutralize the right. alcohol, the methanol, where right. it would not neutralize fuel like, like gasoline. Exactly. So that's the reason you see that squirt of water every time they pull that out of there. There is your new leader after this round of green flag pit stops. 111 laps now complete, and Kanan leads for the third time in this race. Yeah, Rice uh, is back uh, about three seconds behind him, so he's got a pretty nice lead right now for the biggest lead we've seen here. Our biggest lead this afternoon, three seconds. From first to second, and uh, 3.1 seconds back to Frankiti. Castro Nevitz is now in the uh, fourth position. And look at this, old Greg Ray's getting racy out there. Right, he and Dixon racing back there for 12th and 13th. Well, this was uh, before the race as uh, Greg's greeting uh, some of the race fans here in his home state of uh, Texas, a kiss through the fence. out of the car so his day is obviously done he saw him head for the pit area uh, dead stick uh, they looked at it and I think they pronounced it DOA dead on arrival so that Honda will not finish the race yeah in Tough fact it is an engine problem it could be gearbox but uh, well yeah and they uh, came in dead stick it would be yeah. the engine whatever it was he uh, it wasn't running and so he's out of the cockpit and like we said one of the that's the only Andre Green car that doesn't seem to have very much luck for whatever reason. Well, Khan leads it. Rice with the uh, Letterman Ray Hall team rides in second. Right now, you look at that battle for second position. There is Rice and there is Frank Keedy. Frank Keedy just stalking him right now, trying to uh, running a little bit up on the high side there, trying to see if there's a way to get around him out there. But right now, those two guys running almost identical speeds. So it uh, makes it very, very difficult very tough to get around somebody. So it's Kanan, Rice, Frankiti, then Mira, Taylor, Matsura, Castro, Nevitz, and Hornish, the Penske teammates right together on the racetrack. And there you look at one of them right there. Ooh, very close with Darren Manning. In those cars, you can see that those cars do move around quite a bit. I mean, they when you're uh, coming off the corners, they, they're not just uh, going along for a, a ride. Those things are moving a little bit. You've got to drive those things. Castro Nevitz right in front of uh, the car. You're riding along with Manning. You're looking down at Matsura. And right behind Matsura is the number six of Hornish. Yeah, they look like they dance around a bit more this season than last season, which was what we anticipated. Yeah. Manning on the outside right there. We want to hear from Brian Herta, who uh, stands by in the pit lane. problem all weekend where we we're having some kind of a skip in the back of the car it started doing it again in the race and finally something let go I think it was the clutch something like that we just lost drive the engine was still running but the wheels weren't turning so and I got a room for my teammates you know oh, oh, Tony Tony or Dan or Dario can pull it out today and we'll go room for the Lakers tomorrow and hope the Lakers can win tomorrow all right <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, the, he's referring, of course, to the NBA championship where the Lakers trail the Detroit Pistons two games to one. And the next game will be in the uh, Palace of Auburn Hills outside Detroit. So obviously a basketball fan and from L.A. Uh oh, uh, the engine problem when number eight will this bring out the yellow. We got down right away down to the inside. You can see the smoke trail coming out of that thing down there. He's on the flat part of the pit lane, but uh, obviously, oh, we got oh, problem. a problem. This brings out the yellow. Mark, Mark Taylor. Taylor. 
Wow, tough break for Mark Taylor. After a good ride for the youngster who was last year's Infinity Pro champion. I'm wondering if he might have got in the oil from Scott Sharp's car. Happened almost at the same time. Tough break for him. He had a terrific run going. By far his best run of the year for the uh, Team Panther Menards car. Well, he's collecting his thoughts as he sits in the cockpit. Scott Sharp, the former Trans Am champion and co IRL champion of the first season back in 1996, is in the pit area as the safety crew is up there and Mark Taylor stays in the cockpit. And this is the fourth yellow of the afternoon or the early evening hours with Kanan on top over Rice, Frankiti, Mira, Castro Devitz, and Manning rounding out the top six. Well, um, sounded like me for a moment, didn't it? Uh, yellow, a fourth yellow, and uh, heartbreak, really, for uh, British concerns. Yeah, I mean, Mark was doing a fantastic job. He really was racing with the best, uh, building on, on the, his experience that he's had in the first four races. I thought he was in with a chance for a podium here. I'm pretty sure, although I've often been wrong, that he slipped on the oil from Scott Sharp's engine. It doesn't think take much, because we, we were saying earlier on about rain affecting yeah. the mess. It doesn't affect Formula One cars. Oil, by the same token, is a huge problem. Yeah, obviously much worse. Um, you know, it's a lubricant. And, uh, you know, I think it's too coincidental that one car has a, an engine blow up and all of a sudden another car is in the wall. So really very unfortunate. Um, doesn't look like he's hit the wall too hard, uh, fortunately. But, you know, he'll be very disappointed with uh, going out of the race in that way. Does inexperience come into play or is it happen to anybody no I mean there's there's nothing you can do about that um, you know a car's blown up um, it probably hasn't even reached the driver that uh, there's been a problem on the circuit um, so there's nothing he could do you know he's, he's running around there trying to go as quickly as possible and uh, unfortunately he's just been caught out by someone else's uh, problem perhaps that wall comes up quickly doesn't it at 220 miles an hour yes and uh, it's a shame, as I say, for British concerns, because the British drivers uh, are having a fair old crack at this one. Yes, I mean, Dario's still up there fighting for a podium position. Dan dropped back with that rather disastrous pit stop, um, knocked him right back to 17th. But, you know, we still have got 30% of the race to go, so uh, there's all to play for. It seems a, a fair amount of manners that maybe don't exist in Formula One, because uh, obviously there was a problem with the engine, and the driver went straight onto the infield and was off as soon as he could. Yeah, well, I mean, every driver knows what can happen if, uh, if they don't, you know, get to the bottom of the circuit and get off the racing line as quickly as possible. And uh, at the end of the day, you're all out there together and nobody wants to hurt anyone else. So, uh, you know, it's tough racing, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of respect between drivers as well. Well, the wrecking crew hard at work there uh, and pit stops the order of the day. Yes, immediately the yellow's out. You've got to come in and... Uh, there will be at least one more pit stop, possibly, so uh, I think everybody's going to try and uh, hope that this yellow lasts for as long as possible because they'll be saving fuel. So they've got the car to remove, and uh, as we've seen earlier, they're very serious about debris lying around. Yeah, they have to be. Um, they have to be absolutely certain that uh, they've got all the fluid uh, cleared up and uh, make sure there's no parts of uh, Mark Taylor's car on, on the race circuit anywhere so that uh, make sure nobody picks up a puncture by running over anything. Here's another view. You were saying that uh, the marbles appear the later the race goes on. Yeah, the longer the race goes on, as you can see, you know, the lines are fairly defined from this moment on. Um, Sam Hornish and uh, Thomas Schechter are the ones who normally go high side, whether it's uh, marbles or not but uh, it's not for the faint-hearted, for sure. You get on that stuff, and it's just like uh, ice. When it happens to you, Johnny, you don't have much chance to react, but what about when you're behind? Well, same thing, you know, every, everybody's had, uh, had it happen to them on a motorway. Someone breaks in front of you, and, you know, the closing rate is so fast, it can catch you out very easily. Obviously, in these cars, uh, you know, if they lift off the throttle, even, you know, fully off the throttle from 220 miles an hour, it can be just like someone jumping on the brakes in front of you on the motorway. So, uh, you know, it looks like a very silly error to make, but it's, it's easily done. Sun's gone down, the lights are on. What, add, what element does that add to the, to the mix? Well, that now becomes that sort of period that I spoke to you before. Uh, this is Scott Remke from Rayhouse, so he's obviously uh, 
discussing where his boys are, the, um, the lights come on as the sun goes down, and it's, it's like the end of a summer's day, you know, when the sun is low and it's neither dark nor, nor light. And it makes for a tricky experience, but, you know, it's all part of the spectacle. These guys are driving 500 kilometres. At what point does their concentration waver, or doesn't it? Well, they can't really afford it to. Um, you know, uh, as the temperature's going down, the times are going to get faster now, so, uh, you know, the, the race should actually speed up a little bit, even though it's getting dark. And the pit crew, we've seen um, a few incidents in, in the pit lane. I mean, is it more difficult in view of the fact that the extra wires and cables go into these cars? Yeah, I mean, they're only in the pits for, you know, five or six seconds, and there's a lot of work to be done in that period. And, uh, you know, the, the, the guys in the, in the pits are just as pumped up about it as the drivers are on the circuit. You know, they know they can make or break the race for the driver, so, uh, you know, everybody's trying to outdo each other. Buddy Rice in line for his second win in a row. Canaan, your pick is second though. We'll see what unfolds. In the meantime, we'll take a quick break. Well, you can see the darkness now has overtaken the Dallas Fort Worth area. The lights are on. There's little Al who won this race a year ago. Uh, Al back in the 16th position on this restart. He will not likely defend that championship here tonight. No. Now, probably not. Dixon, the only way he's going to win this race is uh, if there's a very, very late yellow and he uh, stays out. Well, Chip Ganassi is calling the shots for Scott Dixon as we get ready to come up, back up through the gearbox. They have gone green, but I wonder if Scott Dixon, Chip Ganassi, is going to cruise for a while and make mileage. Well, you know, Jack, we actually need a flash to get to the finish. We were at the back of the pack there. We had nothing to lose by stopping there and topping it off. A little bit of yellow, we might make it. Otherwise, we're going to need a splash. All right, as we watch Tony Kanaan reassert himself in the front. Fellas, the story is in the back. Well, the story could be fuel mileage here this evening. Tony Kanaan once again reassumes the top spot. You saw that pass on Buddy Rice. Well, the guy in second place on a restart has an advantage. If he guesses right and gets a run, which Tony Kanaan did right there, he can get around the guy in first place. But if the guy in first place gets a little bit of a run on you or gets in the throttle first, you're not going to get that advantage. Uh, Buddy Rice just got snookered right there. Well, Mira has gotten around Hornish for third position. Hornish now is fourth. Frankiti is fifth. Yeah, Fernandez looks like Matt Sur is having trouble as he's been passed by three or four cars here in the last lap. That's him clear on the inside. Yeah, he's definitely uh, got some kind of a problem as Matt Sur is moving straight backwards. Well, now we're told from uh, timing and scoring and race control 55. You just mentioned Matt Sur being passed is losing power. Yeah, he's uh, he's dropped a cylinder. Something's gone wrong uh, because he's way down on the bottom of the racetrack and uh, has quickly moved from uh, the top five to the bottom five to the bottom five actually to the that sewer is now 15th position and is about to be overtaken by uh, little Al. Yeah, the little Al, he's now the last race car running on the racetrack. But to prove you, to you how closely these cars operate, there's not one car been lapped all day long. And after this restart, it'll be uh, some four seconds between uh, first and 15th. There's the Lau. He, uh, he's not having the day that he had hoped for here. There's still this a brand new team, though, that's only their second race. They're still trying to get their act together, and uh, they will sometime, but it won't be today. Well, the question is, now, you, you heard Chip Ganassi say, we need a splash. They don't need tires for the distance. They need a splash. Now, will that splash come under yellow? Will it come under green? Well, 140 laps about to be completed, 60 laps to go. If this goes green the rest of the way, the pit, the people who are smartest in the pits are going to win the race because some cars are going to come in and just take a couple of gallons. And look at Vito Mir on the outside now, Buddy Rice. Vito Mir's had one of the best rides here this afternoon. Yeah, after that, whatever happened during that one uh, segment where he went straight to the back, and now all of a sudden, uh, again, he's moved right back up front and is very, very strong again. He qualified 13th, was running, I think, in the fourth position, and we saw him start to fall off and went to the back of the pack, made a pit stop, and now he's back up in third and battling for second. 
Yeah. Warnish now is fourth. Frankiti is fifth. Then Castro Nevitz, Fernandez, Manning, Ray having a pretty good ride this afternoon up in ninth position. And there he goes to the outside again of Buddy Rice. Let's see. Now he should have a good run at him through three and four. No. Nope. For whatever reason, he seems to lose a little ground down in three and four and get through one and two better. That's just the opposite that we've seen almost everybody run all day long. And look at Sam Hornish back there in fourth. You're right along with Rice now in second position. That's Tony Kanaan out in front. Tony was victorious this season at Phoenix. Of course, Rice two weeks ago in the 88th running of the Indianapolis 500, shortened to 450 laps or 450 miles, we should say, because of some very, very heavy weather. For those of you that joined us two weeks ago, we'll tell you that the National Weather Service said we had 17 tornadoes strike Indiana that particular day. Fran Keaty just got around uh, Sam Hornish. Sam Hornish tried the outside, and when he did, uh, Fran Keaty took advantage, went right by him going down the back straightaway. Now the Penske cars are riding together on the racetrack back in fifth and sixth. There's the top two Toyotas on the racetrack. Top Chevrolet is Alex Barron back in 10th spot. So Honda's race one, two, three, and four right now. Then Toyota fifth and sixth. Still, you see the entire field right together there on the racetrack. I was going to say, the top two guys. He's like three laps off the pace now, but the rest of them are all in the lead lap. Only seven seconds from first to Nine or ten guys are just right there. Right there. I'll tell you what, as, as competitive as these and entertaining as these races, we should have all the races right here. Let's just come here every couple of weeks, shall we? One of the uh, favorite racetracks for the drivers as well. As you said, Larry, it's, it's a demanding race mentally as well as physical. But, boy, I tell you, the fans love it. Look at the huge crowd here. Yes, sir, is. And, uh, the, you know, uh, I think uh, one of the drivers said it best. He says it's a chore just to tighten your seatbelt sometime at this mm -hmm. place because you're always in a bind, you're always turning, you're always, uh, you're always, you know, having to pay attention to what's going on. So it's it's nothing easy on this racetrack. E even uh, well, see at Indianapolis, you have those two long straightaways that, that really, although you're going that fast, you still have some time. Uh, here, there's no time to rest, and in two weeks from tonight, we'll be at Richmond, and there's no time to rest on that thing. No, it's it's even worse, really, as far as Much physically. Than this man. thing, yeah, because they're pulling, they're turning that little racetrack at uh, Richmond now in like 17 seconds, and they're really, really fast there. Well, this racetrack has produced a, a number of near misses and uh, also a lot of rubbing out here. In fact, they're rubbing almost as much as you'd see in a stock car race. Yeah, I mean, it's been very, very close and very tough. And, and it's you have to run close if you want to make a pass, though. That's the problem. If you're not running close, you're not going to pass anybody. And when you run that close sooner or later, you stand the chance that you're going to touch somebody. Well, Frank Keedy. Almost got uh, touched there by uh, I think it's Manning. Manning. Right along again with Buddy Rice, who's back there in second position, trying for a back-to-back -back victory. Works through the 24-degree banking. Come on, seems. 150 laps. 150 down, 50 laps to go. And it's still a shootout among about uh, five or six different drivers. The current standing showing Kanan Rice, Mira, Frankiti. Now watch, this is a replay. This is a replay of Manning and Fernandez. This is a replay. Now watch how close they get. Manning on the inside, Fernandez on the outside. Manning comes up the racetrack. Oh, close. Man, oh. Man, oh man. <laughs> how, they, how he ever got his left front between the front rear tires of Manning without ever making contact, I do not know. Unbelievable. And this is at over 200 miles yeah, an hour. Over 200 miles an hour, and uh, these guys are playing uh, chicken, kind of. Man, man. That's good. It's very, very tough mentally when that happens, because you just know that you're just courting disaster. You're running so close. Well, Kanan continues to lead. Now he has Rice right behind him. 
There's Vito Mira back up to third. Frankidi is fourth. And he's been doing battle with uh, Hornish. Well, Hornish, Hornish is... now has moved to fourth position. Well, that's... There's Manning on the inside. Manning, Manning and Hornish almost get together. Manning has uh, been pretty brave here today. He's been in just, he's been in the middle of just about every situation. Every break <laughs> he's been in. Every situation that we've shown a replay on, Manning has been in it for one reason or another. Man, oh man. Well, there's a look at Barron and Fernandez. Well, Barron having uh, one of his best runs, too. So he's uh, given that Chevrolet a great ride here today. He's the best Chevy power plant out there. And look at him on the inside. Wow. This goes by. Fernandez moves into sixth spot. So a good ride for the uh, team Achiever Red Bull entry. Now Mira moves back Mira's again. falling off the pace a bit. Seen him do that a couple of times. And look at Hornish, though. He's on the outside of uh, Rice up in front. He moves into second place. Wow. Let's watch this scramble for position. Frank Keedy oh. gets passed by a couple of guys. He gets very squirrely. He lost the front end. He lost the air off his front wings. Had to get out of the throttle. Castro Nevis lost out there. Yeah, because it, uh, it had to stop the momentum. On. Oh, look oh. at that. Oh, man. Manning again. Right in the middle of that one. He's been in every replay that we've shown just about. <laughs> Wow. Canon, okay, let, let, here, here's the way it shakes out. Canon, Hornish, Rice, and Manning. If Manning finishes this race with all four wheels on that car, it's just going to be a miracle because he has come so close so many times to being right in the middle of... There must be some donuts on the side of that race man, car. Got to be. Got to be. Here, uh, here comes Rice back at Hornish. Hornish tried to pull down a little bit. Couldn't do it. Okay, buckle your seat belts. We're going to have your classic Texas shootout finish here. Man. Sam Hornish in the place he loves to run. Usually he's on the outside here this close to the end of the race running for first and not for second. And this time it looks like he's going to fall back to third as Buddy Rice pulls on by. So Rice gets the measure of Hornish down the back straightaway. Here comes Manning. Look at Vito Look at Mira. Mira. Look at Mira back up there. He gets a big uh, little draft from Hornish and gets a good run on the outside. Oh, look how close they are. This is the battle for second. You watch that battle from Darren Manning's number 10. Working on lap 160. We'll have 40 laps to go at the conclusion of this, this circuit. And here comes Mira on the outside of Manning. Sam Hornish trying to figure out what he can do to get around, trying to know, he doesn't know whether to go to the inside. Looked like Manning almost got in the grass, almost got in the grass again as he cut this, that little uh, trioval part very, very close down there. Well, Kanan has led the most laps here this evening. Look at Mira. Look at Mira trying to make it three wide into turn three. I just don't think you can do that. Well, well you did. can do it. We've seen Sam Hornish do it, but it doesn't happen very often, let's put it that way. Well, you can get too wide through that little uh, short straightaway the start finish line. You can't go three, though. Boy, Still oh boy. the battle is for second. Orny stays on the outside. Now they go two by two for fourth and fifth. Manning and Mira. There's Manning on the inside. There's Mira on the high side. And Mira giving this car a great ride for Ray Hall Letterman. Boy, he certainly is. And He's there on the high side is Hornish. He's trying to figure out which one of those two guys is going to win this battle, which one he needs to follow and draft with. Uh, so far, he's chosen Hornish, and it's, uh, you know, neither one of them have gained much. Well, let's yeah. talk about Kenny Breck for a moment, too, because this was the racetrack where uh, Kenny was so badly injured last October. He is on the men, has been back in the race car testing, and he says he's just not quite physically ready for it. Mentally he is, but he's not ready physically for the return. Right. He uh, he he was very quick. He tested at Richmond and was just as quick as everybody else. But he said he had back cramps. He uh, his, he didn't feel right. So physically, he's just not quite ready. And he's not going to race until he is. So will he come back and take over Mira's ride? Or will Ray Hall uh, award Mira with a ride the rest of the season? Well, that's yet to be answered. Still a shootout among about six or eight drivers with Kanan Rice, Manning, 
then Hornish, Mira, Ray, and Barron. So let's talk about Ray and Barron. Ray back there in fifth position, make that sixth. Barron is seventh in the best Chevy outing so far. And there's a look at Greg Ray in number 13. And all of a sudden, Scott Dixon right in the middle of the fray as he's right behind uh, Ray. Running on that lap car of Allenzer Jr., the first lap car we've seen all day long. Wow. We've talked about Dixon running near the back of the pack. Now he starts to assert himself. Now he is the ninth position, but there goes Tartakagi. Tartakagi. We've not called his name all day. Well, he got trapped back there behind Al Jr. And see, when he moves to the outside, he just can't make that car work anywhere but right on the bottom. Once he moves to the outside, he's just uh, in trouble for whatever reason and uh, just not having his normal day. Well, Al's not having his normal day either no. now. A lap off the pace after standing in victory lane uh, last season. And look at this. Two, four, two, four, six, seven cars just nose to tail right up there together. Mirror on the outside. Barron underneath him. Manning and Hornish in front of him. Well, Tony Kanaan. Wow. Has led the most laps here this afternoon. He led 191 laps at Phoenix. He won, led 28 at Indianapolis. He's led coming into this evening's race 219 circuits. And of course, he'll get the bonus points for leading the most laps here this evening. Plus, if he can maintain this position, he will take over the, the points lead. Coming into this evening's race, Danny Weldon led by one point over Canaan. Rice was 28 points back. Weldon running back in 11th place, so he also not having a good day here at Texas. So the winner at Phoenix trying for another win here this evening. They've run 45 laps since that last pit stop, Gary. So somewhere in the next uh, five to 10 laps, you're going to see a lot of these guys heading for the pits. Well, we saw what happened in the last pit stop that Rice was able to get out in front of Kanan. But it didn't take Tony Long to reassume that top spot after the restart. Could be a key factor. Pit stops are going to be very important. The mistake's going to put you out of the race. And right now, there are nine drivers within one second of the leader. Yeah, Dixon has fallen back quite a ways. He's back in 10th. But you can see there's the first nine guys all right there on that same straightaway. In some cases, side by side. Battling each other. And look at Barron on the inside. He and Vito Mira having a great race back there for fifth. Well, Barron in the Chevrolet. Right now you've got Hondas out in front in the first two positions. Then the Toyotas of Manning and Hornish ride in the third and fourth. The Chevy of Barron is fifth. And the Honda of Mira and Ray and Franchitti uh, would be sixth, seventh, and eighth. And I think that just proves that the engines uh, aren't that far off. I mean, they may be getting out qualified, but come race time, if you're set up right, you can race with anybody because the Toyotas and the Chevrolets obviously just as fast as the Hondas here. Well, right you also morning. know that the Toyota engineers, the Chevy engineers are tweaking all the time to squeeze some more horsepower. Look at this. Buddy Rice tries to make a shot on the outside, trying to give him that old last minute effort. Who's going to lead this lap? It's going to be Rice, I believe. Well, yes, it was. It was Rice. They yes, gave it was. Yes. It was Rice. Of course, these all have transponders, so it's not a guess. They're all, uh, you know, electronically scored. But boy, oh boy, that's what he's got to do. And that may be what. Oh! Contact. Contact. He got, oh, they kept it off the wall. Did they all keep it off the wall? I don't believe it. Harnish barely hit I the wall. I don't believe it. Did the yellow come out? The yellow did not come out, I don't think. Man. Oh. Holy smokes. The yellow is out. The yellow is out. Well, everybody's going to make their pit stop on this last yellow, but man, oh man. Did we avert disaster or did we avert disaster? You just saw some of the best driving by about four or five different guys back there that you're going to see at any kind of racetrack anywhere in the world. Those guys, it would have been so easy just to slam those things right into the fence. And they all kept them under control. Hornish even went up and just touched the Brushed wall. The wall. And uh, still. You see him kind of snaking the car yeah. back and forth to make sure the he suspension wants, was all he right. He wants to make sure everything is okay, but he, I don't. He, it doesn't take very much contact. You just don't know with these cars. 
It's, well, look at the front, right front wing here. Yeah, Manning. Uh, Manning, he'll need some attention in this pit stop. Let's watch again. Watch him scramble. There's the contact. Rice and Manning. Unbelievable. Manning got down there really where he shouldn't have been, I don't think. Rice, I think, uh, he got down to the inside. Wow. I don't know. He was up there pretty far. Yeah. yeah. He had his own lane there. He wasn't that far. He was, he was up there pretty far. He was far. above that white line. But Hornish and uh, Rice watch from both. Inside. There's the con. Oh, uh, oh there's got to be suspension damage to boy. Manning's car. Look at Rice hang on here. Wow. Look how close this gets. Rice did a terrific job. Well, we said if Manning finished this race with all four wheels and that thing, he's going to be lucky. He, he may be lucky he's got to go in and change the nose of that thing again. So he won't Only be up. the nose. Oh, man. That's the second nose that they've uh, had to replace this afternoon. Yeah, he's going to have to borrow one from his teammate. Probably doesn't have any more spares. The, well, Kanan will lead. Well, this is a big break. They they're, all, they all they're all going to make their, their pit stop. Final pit stop under the yellow. The fifth yellow of the afternoon. But I think Manning is is going to he's going to have to do something with that wing, which is pretty much going to put him out of contention. Franchitti, he got a big break. Uh, Rice, is, he got a lousy break there because he's going to move to the back because he uh, he's already back, and so did Hornish. Hornish is going to have to uh, make a pit stop. Tough break for those stop guys. Franchitti and Tony Kanon, Darren Manning, they're still working on that car. Oh, there's oh. contact! Look at this. Who was that? That was Scott Dixon, and this is. Uh, Oh, that was Fernandez. Fernandez. Scott Dixon and Fernandez got together coming out of the pits. Dixon almost gets upside down as he got so far up. And Buddy Rice, uh, he's he's got enough damage that they're saying. That's it. What a tough break. What a tough, tough break. Uh, race so hard in the top two all day long and then have something like that happen with just uh, 15 laps to go. Well, you have to wonder now how much damage was done to Scott Dixon's mount or to Fernandez. Well. Yeah, you would think. Rice, uh, he's climbing out. Well, and that's a smart decision. No sense going out there and doing what Carpenter did, slamming it into the wall and tearing it up more. Because, uh, and I'm sure his his view of what happened is going to be a lot different than Darren Manning's view of what happened. But, uh, well, Manning was, uh, was well off that white line. The only thing I can say about Darren Manning is that uh, he has been probably the most aggressive guy on the racetrack today. Yeah, yeah. You take that any way you want. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Whether you're driving with your, uh, well, whatever. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, you take that any way you want, but he's definitely been the most aggressive guy on the racetrack today. You don't get it every... Look at this again, Larry. Look at this. Fernandez just went out. Uh, he, he just, he was going trying to go around Mira, and he just drilled Dixon. Dixon uh, didn't even know he was coming, I don't think. Watch this. This ought to be exciting. Whoa. Almost like a motocross. Well, Dixon apparently is getting out of the car, so there was sub substantial damage. There's well, little Buddy, Buddy Rice. Rice. Maybe we'll get a board with him. Tough break. Yeah, we're going to go down and see if we can get a word with Buddy I, Rice. The last I heard, there was like, there was no threat behind me, so we started to fall back in line, and right there, as we went and turned in, I just got a big hit from the side. I don't. I don't know if we came down or car came up. I'm really not sure until I see it, but I mean, I had no idea anybody was there, so. Did, did you know something was broken as you came down pit road, or did you just feel it as you started to leave? It, it had nothing broke until he stuck it in gear. As soon as he stuck it in gear, it broke the half shaft. All right, Buddy Rice uh, sits on the wall here. You can tell the disappointment here. They thought they had the car to beat, and they thought they had something left for Tony Kanaan. Now, that's interesting, Larry, because he said he didn't know the person was there. Now, that can be a spotter situation, not telling him somebody was there on the inside. Well, that's right. He said they told him it was clear, and he just pulled down. So, how's it going to shake out in the final 17 laps? Under yellow, the final pit stop of the evening. And look who's leading now, Dan Weldon, the leader and winner at uh, Motegi. After this uh, yellow flag pit stop, they're showing Weldon, then Castro Nevitz, then Kanan, Baron, Frankiti Ray Mira, who was a loser in that round of pit stops, Hornish. Yeah, well, Hornish fell way back when he uh, got in that almost that tussle with the uh, Manning and Rice got together. So he he was a long way back when he went into the pits and didn't gain anything in the pits. 
Barron is the guy who uh, really did a nice job. Uh, that whole team has done a nice job today. He's he moved up right behind Kanan. The real question is going to be, can either Weldon or Castro Nevis make Hold it to off, the end? Kanan. Well, they they made a pit stop 56 laps ago. Can even with these yellows, well, can their they only chance to win this thing is to stay out and and milk that fuel supply. Yep, and that's what they're going to try to do. Obviously, they've made the decision to uh, stay out there and hope they've got enough fuel to finish the race. The only way they've got a chance to win. So, so. can on and uh, can turn up the wick as can Baron. Frank yeah. Kitty will restart. Well, the yellow flag uh, is still out, which means we can discuss a fairly eventful uh, last couple of minutes. Uh, accidents on the track and, and in the pit lane. It never stops. Yes, it's a fair bit of a incident coming out of the pits there but uh, in fairness i think poor old scott dixon was a bit innocent there and uh, fernandez just didn't look where he was going um, and that was a huge impact so uh, poor old dixon was the uh, big victim in that deal our commentary team is saying that uh, manning gets on with all four i mean they probably said it a few times didn't they yeah. but uh, it's as though they're laying the blame on him i don't actually think he was to blame there was he no i think uh, i think when you look at the uh, in-car camera Buddy Rice is just turning into the corner, doesn't know there's a car on the inside. Um, and I felt that he was the one that actually came down. Um, you know, Darren's been involved in quite a few incidents today, and some are his fault, but I don't think that one was really. Well, now it sets up uh, an interesting race and an interesting race for the championship lead. Yes, with Dan got himself to the front, Tony's tucked in behind him. They both pitted on uh, 128 laps. So they're going to try and get to the uh, end of this race. Um, be interesting to see if they can make it. 13 laps to go. Let's see what happens. And Mira's on the outside. On the outside. Wow, he went around uh, Castro Nevis on the outside. Kanan looks pretty strong, though. He's been strong all day long. And Kanan reassumes the top spot on lap 188. Wow, well, then... Uh, I didn't think he was going to give Fran Keaty room, but he did. Now then, here comes Barron. Barron on the inside. Look at this right Barron's having, and look at Mira, Mira. on the high side. Three wide. Vito Mira on the outside, three wide. Hang on, Vito. Wow. We've seen that done one other time with Sam Hornish, and he ended up winning the race, but boy. Takes some uh, pretty good I nerve. What, I tell you what, I don't know if anybody has anything for Tony Kanaan. Oh, look at Hornish down on the inside of Weldon. He goes around, he and Mira both, as Weldon going straight backwards. Well, let's see what Hornish has in the final 12 laps here. Well, remember, Hornish uh, got up, just barely tapped the wall. Weldon well, slowing down. I think he's out of fuel. I bet he's out of fuel. Well, he could be. And this could bring out a yellow. Well, now he's picking up the throttle again. Well, he might have just uh, lost some. Uh oh, lost. No, he's racing the engine. He's lost the gearbox in that thing. So no yellow now. Kanan, Frankiti, and look at Baron. Baron's right up there. Hornish is right behind him. So Hornish has made a great comeback after getting clear up, touching the wall. Looked like his day was over. Didn't see any way he was going to save that thing from crashing. Now that he's right back on the hunt. Ten laps to go. Ten laps to go. Look at Alex Barron. Started this race in 22nd position. What a got terrific. The Chevy up in third. What a terrific run for him. Hornish back in fourth. Then it's Mira. Then Greg Ray. A good ride for Greg before yep. the hometown fans. Yep, sure is. Hornish. I'd like to see uh, Greg Ray get some financial help, some sponsorship, and keep that thing going the rest of the, se the season. Hornish and Mira kind of trying to draft each other to move back up there. Oh, no, Mira says, I'm through drafting. I'm going to go around if I can, but he can't do it. Eight laps to go. Kanan won already this season at Phoenix. Hornish and Keaty, after winning the pole, his first pole of his career, would like to find his first win here at Texas. Hornish and Mira were the two fastest cars on the racetrack that last lap as they're pulled right up on the back of Alex Barron now. And look at Ray. Ray is right with them. He was uh, also, he was the third fast. He was the second fastest. Actually, that time, and Mira was third fastest. Hornish looking for a place to go. Is tucked in behind 
Barron as the laps wind down. And here comes Mira on the high side of Hornish. Where the spotters become so important in situations like this here in Texas. As you heard Buddy Rice say, you know, he was told he was clear and he tried to move back down. That's when he and Manning got together. And right now, you've really got to have your spotters on your side. And they've got to be telling you what's going on around you, especially when Mira is the outside. You don't want Sam Hornish pulling up into him when he's already out there. And look at Sam Hornish. He's on the outside. Mira on the outside of him. Sam on the outside of Alex Barron. This is for third position. He's got to get by Barron to have a shot at the two leaders. Looks like he may have him cleared down the back straightaway. Mira's trying to go to three wide on the outside of him again. We've seen Mira out there a couple of different times. Unbelievable. And he's going to make it work. Sam, Sam could not get around Barron. Five, four laps to go now. Four laps to go. Unbelievable. Mira ran that hole. We've seen that happen. He's only the second guy we've ever seen try to do that here. Hornish being the other one. And look at Greg Ray. While he was up there three wide, Greg Ray's moved around him. Momentarily. Momentarily, and now Vito Mira comes back. Meanwhile, Team Green pulls away from the rest of them. Three laps to go, and it's going to be a shootout between Kadan and Franchitti. The two Andretti Green teammates swap the lead early in this race. And it's going to be up to them for the final three-lap shootout. Make that two-and-a-half lap shootout. Wow, look at Vito Mira again on the outside of Hornish. Two laps to go. We'll see the white flag the next time by. Hornish just cannot find a way around Barron. Uh-oh, Castro Navis Castro ran out of Davis fuel. has a problem. Yeah, he ran out of fuel. Remember, he was trying to make it to the end. He came up three laps short. His gamble did not pay off. The captain doesn't make many mistakes, but this was one of them. White flag. One lap to go. Does Franchini have anything for his teammate? I don't think so. I think uh, Kanan has had uh, pretty much things his way most of the day, and I don't think this lap is going to change much. Well, the battle is actually going to be for third place, third, fourth, and fifth. Exactly. Yeah. So Fran this will not, as close as it is, it will not be one of the closer finishes here at Texas. As Kanan picks up the victory his second of the season he won at phoenix frank Keedy goes second baron takes third great ride for baron the chevrolet hornish is fourth then fernandez and mira so mira finishes in sixth fernandez sneaks back up into fifth position ray finishes seventh so ray dropped off a couple of spots in the last two laps manning brought it home with all four wheels hanging on it after changing the front the front wings a couple of times. So our congratulations to Tony Kanan. There's Michael Andretti.